Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the first ever All Beer Inside interview. Uh, we're joined here today in beautiful Point Claire with Troy from La Brose. Hi. How's it going? It's good. Um, I'm glad that you opted to take this interview. I very much appreciate it. La Brose is located in Montreal in the West Island industrial sector. Beers are great. And if you're ever here, I highly suggest you swing by. Uh, so, Troy, what's your beer story? What brought you to craft beer? Uh, so, I've always had an interest in beer. Okay. Um, like any typical Canadian, started at a young age, drinking 18, 17, <laughs> 16 maybe with my dad. And when I went to, uh, to university in Alberta, uh, my cousin and I were brewing in our in our basement. Okay. Um, so, that was kind of the introduction to to actually making the product. Good. Understanding what goes into it, uh, what the ingredients are. And at the time, we were just doing uh, kit recipes. So, okay. it, wasn't, it wasn't really yeah. you know, making, making beer like we do here. And then fast forward to, this is probably about five or six years ago now. Um, I had an interest in learning the entire process okay. uh, from end to end, starting with uh, water chemistry to the, the grain milling techniques, uh, all of the different vessels that you would use in a, in a, a large scale brewery, you know, your, your hot liquor tank, your mash tun, your boil kettle. Okay. And then looking at fermentation as well, different temperatures, different yeasts. Uh, so I, I got into that, uh, at home in, in my garage. Okay. And you're completely self-taught? Self-taught. Awesome. Yep. No, nobody showed me anything. Yeah. Internet. Internet's amazing. Let's start with one of your beers. Uh, yeah. I see you graciously gave us some uh, a flight here. Yeah, absolutely. So, so uh, what are we starting with? We got four beers here. Uh, we'll start with the lightest one. It's a Jacked Up uh, Dry Wit. Okay. That's the name. Um, it's a beer we collaborated with Jack Astors on to get a, okay. a nice uh, light wheat beer. Um, has some herbal notes into it, uh, a little bit of peppery. Uh, um, it's, it's very weedy yeah. in the smell. Yeah, very, very, very okay. nice and light. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for coming. That's Stacey. If somebody were to come in who's new to craft beer, yep. what would you start them with? Uh, they're like, I have no idea. I'm used to drinking Bud and Blue. What would you suggest they try? Yeah. So one great thing about our, our brewery is that we have such a diverse range of beers. Yep. And I can find a beer that, that pretty much anybody that, say, that says they're not a beer drinker okay. can, can gravitate towards. So our typical Bud or Blue or whatever is our, our Gold Digger. Okay. Um, it's one of our, our flagship beers. It's a uh, crisp and, and vibrant uh, pilsner with American hops. It's you know it, it has a bit more characteristic and flavor than than obviously a Coors Light or, yeah. or that. But yeah. uh, no, it's it's an easy drinking beer. Your your flight style. Yeah. It's it's very. I don't see anything like this. I yeah. usually see the basic flights. Yeah. Uh, where did the flights come from? Where did that? Give so you? Uh, my good friend uh, Mike. Our kids go to school together. Okay. We we ski together in the winter. Um, he's helped us out a lot building the place. Uh, he's a, a carpenter, woodworker. Oh, okay. So he built our bar, uh, put it all together, and he had extra wood from the bar top that he made. So he he put together these uh, these flights for us. Um, Beautiful. They're yeah, I've, I've never seen anything like that either. Um, I think the the copper and and you know, elbowed connections yep. it kind of fits in with the rest of the decor that we yeah. have here. So what was your first craft beer? that you ever made, good or bad, whichever one it was. Do you remember the first, first one yeah, you made? The very first one that I made was a French Saison. I don't know if you remember back uh, when we opened, it was one of our first ones okay. as well. I think yeah. it was number six yeah. or, or so around there. That was that was the first one I made in my garage. It was made with a, uh, a French style yeast uh, and with uh, actual lemon peels in it. Okay. Yeah, I remember being very zesty when yeah. having it. So when, when we scaled that up for production, uh, I spent three or four hours zesting lemons by hand. Get some video and pictures of that, which is, uh, I go back to that. I'm like, wow, we've, okay. we've really evolved since then. Uh, the craft beer scene in Quebec has been expanding more and more. Right. Uh, what are some of the roadblocks you came into while creating uh, La Brose Brewery? Uh, I think everybody, and, and I, I spent a bunch of time this week with, uh, with a bunch of different brewers at the uh, AMBQ conference in Quebec. The, the big hassle that, that everybody talks about here is, is dealing with permits and government. Um, whether it's Recycle Quebec yeah. or, or just understanding the, the laws from the Fiji des Alcohol. Uh, there's a lot of gray zones. Yes. There was, there was actually a, a large debate, and uh, you, could see, you could feel the tension in the room between brewers and contract brewers. Yeah. Uh, so there's, there's this thing where people will come in with their brand, the recipes, and, yeah. and get a beer made by a contract brewery. And there's a bunch of gray zone on the legality of this uh, you know, for people that are trying to build a brand that have a brewery yes. like ourselves okay. versus someone that just has an idea and a name and, and, and wants to get it out, there's, there's some tension. I'm, I really don't care. Yeah. I, I think it's fair market. So and, if, uh, if like a friend or somebody were to come in and be like, Hey, I want to brew on your system. Yeah. You'd have no problem. You'd let them do Ab it. Absolutely. Cool. So we're, we're talking with, uh, some, I, I can't really release. Okay. It yet, no, but, that's fine. Uh, we, we plan to be doing this and it, it should be kind of a, a market changing, uh, thing. So. Excellent. 
that's that's great to hear. I mean, change is always good for the brewing industry, right. and I find uh, it's very rare that they're failing right now because people are looking for more flavor. Uh, people are just tired of your basic lager or your basic yep. pilsner. Uh, that people want change, and uh, I mean, just Molson laying off 500 just shows that they're not keeping up with the market trends, yep. uh, which is very important, and they're going to have to shift. So. Yep. It's actually funny you mentioned Molson. Um, I was looking. We're, we're building a, a code of ethics for our for our company. Just okay. something for us to to, yeah. to all get behind and, and believe in, in the same vision and and something to live by when we work here. Uh, so I was looking for some examples of of actual code de vie, uh, okay. in the industry, and I, lo- I was looking at the Molson one. Yep. And they're talking about keeping up with market trends, and this this is their new thing. So yeah. I, 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 I th- I'm sure they totally understand that they're they can't just keep making that same beer all the time. Yeah, people, no, people sure. want some change. So yeah, exactly. And um, like when I first started to get in craft beer because of the Mondial, there wasn't as many. It started with Cheval Blanche, which was uh, downtown Montreal. Yeah. And then it's just it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger every yeah. year. So it's fantastic to for everybody to try something new. Right. Okay. What's the next uh, beer you brought us? Next beer again, one of our flagships. It's uh, the Wicked Nor'easter. Okay. Um, it's our, our first, I guess, canvas uh, that we built of a New England IPA based on the, the style that's coming out of uh, Vermont these days. It's a very hazy, citrus, yeah. tropical fruit, uh, not so bitter. Um, all of the, the hops are, are end of boil or, or whirlpool additions. There's not, okay. no bittering hops in them. So. Excellent. And then severely dry hopped. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite New England IPAs out of uh, Quebec right now. Thank you. So yeah, we're using this beer as a, a canvas for a couple of things, um, as other beers that we're making. So the, the mango cream school, the, the next yeah. one that we have here is, is based on that. Obviously, we add a bunch of vanilla and mango okay. and lactose and all that. I uh, hope you're okay with lactose. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I you, don't. Are you, are you team, I don't have any food allergies, thankfully. Are, so. are you team lactose? Or? Um, see, I'm, I'm team whatever I enjoy. Okay. Uh, recently, good. I have been having a lot of lactose IPAs, yeah. and they're very tasty. So uh, when it comes to IPAs... And even like milkshake stouts, I'm okay with. Yep. Uh, so lactose, yes, but sometimes like I don't think lactose belongs in Pilsner or something. Like yeah, that, no, so. no, absolutely. And uh, uh, you know, I'm I'm kind of a one lactose and done yeah. kind of guy. Like I'll have the mango and be like, yeah, I'm done for the evening. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, they're heavy. I mean, our our last round of the audio, we had a lot of lactose based beers. Yeah, uh, with the IPAs coming out of Decadent Ales, and yeah. it was like just flavor upon. It's like, oh, you get milk, you get strawberry, you get this. You're like, yeah. whoa, this is amazing. Yeah. So it's stacked it's, flavors for sure. I, I really, I think everybody enjoys the creation part of new beer, yeah. of craft beer, where yeah. you could come in and, hey, I've never tried that before. Oh, I never tried. Uh, for example, a couple of people at my current workplace are like, oh, what should I try? I'm like, well, what do you like? Oh, um, I like sour candy. Try sour beer. Yeah. And, yeah. oh, I like, I like pumpkin spice lattes. Try pumpkin beer. Yeah. It's just, you have to, I find you have to find your flavor profile right. and uh, just shift it to beer. So we, we found that. Um, I think we, we're, we're creating some, some great New England style or hazy IPAs. Yeah. Uh, we're coming up with a new brand, and I, I don't have the can yet. Uh, we, we brewed the first batch of it. We're waiting for the labels. We're calling it the Extra Wicked Series. Okay. So it'll be a series of beers all around the same kind of characteristics, same alcohol level, same you know, haziness yeah. and, and bitterness levels. Uh, but we're going to be playing with different hops in there, uh, trying to create different profiles, uh, flavor profiles, and, and and nose profiles. Where does, I, I mean, it's LeBros Brewery and it's along LeBros Street, but yep. is that pretty much why why it's called LeBros? <laughs> so I'm uh, Tête Carré from Alberta. Okay. Uh, my, my I speak French well, but yeah. uh, I don't know all the slang in Quebec. No. And yeah, when, when, I, found, when I found the place, uh, my partner at the time, I... I Mentioned to him the the name that we should come up with uh, or, or use so, uh, Labrasse Brewery, okay. Microbrasserie Labrasse, and he starts laughing. I'm like, oh, I, didn't, I didn't think it was that yeah. funny, and and I asked him why. He's like, well, quand tu prends un brasse in in Quebec French, it's like just to get to get hammered. Okay, so, okay, that's uh, it. It kind of makes yeah. sense, and uh, you know, there's a lot of people that that do find it hilarious, and oh. <laughs> and that play on words is is something that we kind of brought forward in the brand. Awesome. Um, there's a lot of play on words like the the Seth Rogen Bach. Yeah, uh, the Black Sabroth. Uh, you know, well, even I mean, like, uh, pumpkin tended your pumpkin beer. No pumpkin tended. Yeah, exactly. yeah, so we. I like I like the dad jokes. I'm a, I'm a dad, so <laughs> you know <laughs> that's great. Um, so I see we got a couple of barrels behind us in the yep. video. Yep. Uh, your barrel aging program. How's that coming along? We filled those barrels over a year ago, I believe it was. Which you know, in sense of of barrel aging, that's it's about yeah. it's about the right time. We have uh, two beers in three different barrels. Uh, one barrel has an imperial stout. 
uh, which is our, from our first Imperial Stout batch that we did. And the other two barrels are the Weizenbach, which is actually the same recipe as the uh, the Winter Weizen. Okay. Um, so we we infected those with uh, Brettanomyces. Yep. Uh, and they've been sitting there. Uh, gaining flavor and, and mellowing out for the past year or so. Is that uh, one of them coming out to the public? I, I wanted them out for Christmas, so okay. we'll see if I can get that done in time. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we'll yeah, throw them into the bright tank, carve them up, and, and then put them into bottles. Excellent. Yeah. So recently, uh, what are some uh, wild off flavor adjuncts you've tried uh, that you would think are, are interesting? I, I mentioned the series that we have. We have also a, a sour series, okay. uh, our What the PH, yep. WTPH. Mm -hmm. um, we've, we've added several different things into these along the way. There's the Rose Hip and Hibiscus, uh, the Framboise that we okay. did recently, uh, which is a, a collaboration with, um, uh, with Brewski. The next one that we're doing, we, we canned it and we're just, again, waiting for labels. Uh, we're, we plan to be releasing about four or five new beers over the next four weeks. Uh, which is going to be amazing, right in time for Christmas. Yeah. And uh, I work nearby, so that's yeah. great. <laughs> so the, the addition in, in that one uh, coming out is uh, Cherry Blasters, the oh, like cherry candies. Interesting. So that's going to be a sour cherry, cherry blaster. Wow. Okay, I'm definitely going to be here to try that. So, um, you know, we're just trying to, like everybody else, find a little bit, uh, some some tools that we can okay. add into the beer. Um, it helps with marketing as well. Yeah, for sure. Uh, people like that kind of, you know, oh, let's see what they're going to yeah. do next and what they're going to add in there, so... Cool. Uh, now, you mentioned you collabed with uh, Pub Brewski, and I know you've collabed with Four Origins before. Yep. Who would you collab with in Quebec, and then Ontario, and then, if you can, like, the world? Who yep. would you love to, if it's an option, and you could collab with them, who would it be? Yep. So, I'll, I'll talk about another collaboration that we're, we're currently doing. Uh, we'll, we're about to release it fairly soon. Uh, it's with uh, the guys at, in Kahnawagi. Okay. We brewed a Blue England IPA. Blue England IPA. Yeah, it's a, it's a New England style. Yeah. Uh, but we added a T to it, and I'm not even going to pretend I know what, what T <laughs> it is. Dan, Dan is the master behind that. So he blew, he brewed a blue tea. Uh, and the interesting thing about this tea is that depending on the pH and temperature, the, t the color changes. Wow. So okay. So there's, there's pictures that we have of, of the beer in a glass that look like a dark purple. Yeah. And then in better light, uh, or when it warms up, a little bit more more blue. Okay. And then when you shine a light right from the back, it actually looks like bright pink. That's amazing. Yeah. So uh, that's coming out uh, probably in two weeks' time. Okay. And yeah. you'll be canning them here, or they'll be. Uh, they're already canned. Okay. Uh, waiting on the labels, and we'll release it here. Uh, they're gonna, they're going to be having kegs over there, and, and I think cans as well. Okay. Um, so we'll we'll do a big big release Excellent. party for that at, at both places. Yeah. Uh, you also mentioned your labels. Um, the creativity behind your labels. Where does that come from? So who, who does your labels? Who comes yep. up with the names? I have a, a long-standing friend that uh, always wanted to be involved a little bit with us. Uh, he's a, a graphic designer. Uh, okay. at, you know, he's worked at some some really big companies. He offered to help us uh, pro bono for the for the first part to to help us get the brand established, to get the the templating all done for for the brand and and, and work on the logos. Uh, so he's his name's Kevin Kevin Hardy. Okay. He's uh, he actually moved to Toronto about a uh, six or eight months ago. Okay. Uh, so he's still working on it, but he comes back. He lives in San Lanzaro right, right oh. near me. So he's actually here today. I'm going to stop by and see him later today. Excellent. Uh, he's, he's the, the genius behind all the labels and, you know, we kind of, I guess all together, the entire brewery, uh, you know, the bar staff and Dan and I, and, and my partner work on the names and then give him that kind of vision of what we want it to look like. And he, he nails it every time. Excellent. Uh, what made you decide cans over bottles or uh, tall boys or anything yep. like that? And again, uh, bottles in Quebec is really difficult okay. with Recycle Quebec. Yeah. Um, even cans have their challenges, but it, it's a little bit easier to, to deal with. Uh, and just as from a business perspective, uh, it costs us half the price to distribute these due to the weight okay. of the glass. Yeah. Uh, which is staggering. Like, yeah. uh, it's just money that I don't need to spend yeah. for, for no reason. Uh, the entire industry, I think, in, in the craft beer scene is moving towards cans. Yeah, well, I mean, there's conveniences like it keeps out light, uh, yeah. which destroys uh, beer. Right. And uh, they're just more portable, I find. It's easier to bring a can on, let's say, the beach right. uh, than... Yep, a it, bottle that's it's, like, it's, oh, you can't bring glass on the beach. So. It's, it's accessible, yeah. yeah, on the boat, in the park, yeah. uh, wherever. It's just easier. Uh, and recycling, I, I prefer cans to recycle versus uh, the bottles. I know the bottles are, are reusable, but you know, such a a mass amount of energy that has to be spent to even go collect them and bring them back and wash them. Yeah. And this uh, with the aluminum cans, you melt them down and yeah. you, you make exactly the same number of cans yeah. that you, you started with. Okay. I guess we'll try the next beer. Yeah. So next beer, uh, another one of our flagships is the mango creamsicle. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Cheers. Again, based on the, uh, the New England recipe. It's, uh, 
but on the nose, it's it's really yeah, nice. The vanilla is it just yeah. it pops out. Uh, yeah, vanilla and mango, it's beautiful. This beer right now for us is is our number one seller by twofold. The mango cream skull. The mango cream skull. Wow. Oh, um, because yeah. I was here when you had the uh, collaboration beer tasting with Bootlegger. Yep. And uh, a friend of ours, he had the mango, and he's like, "Oh, it's terrible." I'm like, "Give me the beer. I <laughs> will drink it. Beer. I will finish your beer." Yeah, it's <laughs> so, it's not for everybody. Yeah. Um, and then and you know what? The first time I had my first IPA, yeah. I'm like, "What is this? This is this doesn't yeah. taste like uh, the kokini that I drank yeah. when I was 18." Yeah. Um, and your palate evolves, and mm-hmm. flavors that you're looking for okay. evolve, and just things that are different. Uh, you, you, yeah, you yeah, crave that's, that. Uh, that's it. And uh, like we've said on our, our audio, and like I'm saying today, it's try new things. Yeah. Um, try new beers. If if it's not for you, then switch to wine or part, whatever you right. want to try. Yeah. Uh, just try it. Yeah. So and that's what you have to do. You so. you asked me before what is a gateway beer that yeah. people come in and I mentioned the Gold Digger. Um, so that's for you know your typical tailgating kind of guys that mm-hmm. want to watch football and drink drink, drink their bud. That's what they they would tend towards. Uh, but there are other demographics that come in here and they're like, oh, I drink wine. I don't, yeah. I don't like beer. I'm with my boyfriend. <laughs> uh, and we have a, a fantastic sour series that is a gateway for for females to come into the craft beer scene. Yeah. And uh, probably 90% of the time, if if someone comes in and they say, I don't really like beer, I'll, I'll convince them to have a sour and they'll love yeah. it. The, and then, and then they're, they become fans. Yeah, especially it's depending on the sour for some people, I yeah. find. Um, yeah. I mean, there's great sours, and yeah. there are some not great sours. Yeah, our, but, our, our sours aren't uh, too too puckery, yeah. too sour. Like they're you know a little bit tartness to okay. it, uh, some nice color, some nice floral notes to it. Yeah. Uh, it's not not super crazy. Um, your uh, Lebros label, the hop with the windmill. Where yep. does that come from? Uh, well, the, you use hops in beer, yeah. so that one's yeah. pretty <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> pretty clear. Uh, the windmill is a there's a, a windmill in Point Claire uh, by the water near the oh, village. Okay, yeah, no, okay, yeah. So and it's on the the city city logo. Okay, um, we're very community based here at Labrosse. We give back to the community. Uh, we're involved in community events and we do a lot of sponsorships okay. in the area. Uh, so we want people to know where we're from and uh, that we're proud to be here. Uh, we like working with the city and. Uh, they support us, we support them kind of thing. Would you like to get outside of Quebec? Like, would you so like to have your beers in Ontario and yeah. the Maritimes? So that's that's a very interesting question. I told you we're working on some yes. other, other collaborations that might be market changing. Uh, we've been talking with the guys at Wood Brothers quite okay. quite quite a bit extensively yeah. over the past uh, couple of months. We're trying to figure out how we do a, a cross-border collaboration. Okay, yeah, because uh, I, I know there's some silly rules about you need a location there and... For thing, so. well, so this was uh, actually it was interesting. I was at at the AMBQ conference uh, this week, and they're talking about the the contract brewing. Okay, um, and it's kind of this same thing. And the, the again, the rules are very gray gray when it comes yeah. to this. Uh, and it comes down to who's invoicing the customer, who's doing the sales and marketing, all of the all of those things. Okay. There's, there's like little details in yeah. the rules on on how you can consider yourself to, to have a brand and sell it. What we're willing to do, I think, is is brew together. Okay. Uh, we're they're going to come here, brew with us. We're yep. going to go over there, brew with them. Excellent. Uh, and we'll just do uh, a collaboration where I'll put their name on the can. We'll get their name into okay. Quebec, and then we'll do the same uh, when they start uh, filling product or cans or bottles, awesome. whatever, to get our name out there. Who are some of your favorite U.S. brewers that you're in Vermont, you're in Maine, and you're just like, yeah, I need to go there, yeah. and you'd love to yeah. work with them? Uh, so there's there was dozens in in San Diego. Yeah, uh, San Diego was probably the city that got me into craft beer. Okay, uh, I've been there quite a few times and just love the area, love yeah. the vibe. Uh, so as far as one of the big, well known breweries, Stone is is at the top of the okay. list for that. Yeah. Um, in Vermont, there's again, sorry, I know. Vermont to New Hampshire, so many. The last time we were in uh, Massachusetts at the Extreme Beer Fest in February, okay, we stopped in uh, Pipe Dream in Londonderry, New Hampshire. This okay. small little brewery yeah. that opened about the same time as us. They have maybe 20 different beers, very heavy into dark sours, <laughs> and they were fantastic. Cool. Uh, and just a really cool hippie vibe. I loved it. I'd love to, to work with them and try to get our, our sour program amped up a little bit. Where's somewhere you'd like to go on a beercation that you've never been to? Well, I've never been to Africa, anywhere in Africa. Well, I, to my understanding, the South African beer scene is starting to explode right now. Interesting, so, yeah. So that's that's yeah. probably one area that I'd, that I'd go to. Uh, all the, the main beer attraction places I've been to, you know, Belgium and Germany okay. and... and uh, have you ever done Oktoberfest, like real Oktoberfest? No, I haven't been for that. That yeah. would be an experience to yeah. see. Yeah, I, I have a couple of friends who have uh, 
literally they said, just go. I'm like, well, you're not telling me why to go. Just go. Just go. Just go. Just get yourself there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So let's try that last beer. Sure. Last one. Uh, Again, (laughs) I picked out almost all of our flagships here. This is our A2 Brutes. Okay. Um, It is a Brute IPA. Uh, so which like champagne IPA? Yeah, champagne IPA. Uh, we dried it out. Uh, we we add in some uh, amylase to, to to convert all the the complex starches into sugars, mm-hmm. and it actually mm-hmm. ferments down below zero Plato, which means there's no residual sugars or, or glucides glucides in the uh, in the beer. It's, uh, um, it's very clean, so there, a little dry. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of people that are. I don't want sugar. I want to, I'm watching what I'm eating, and we're, we'd actually like to take this to a lab and see really how much uh, residual sugar wow. is in there. It should be zero. I like to get it certified and see that that it is, and that might be one of the the selling points that we can have with Excellent. this beer. Um, again, it's it's tropical fruit. Uh, yep. It's it's kind of based on that same New England style. It's very hazy. Yeah. Um, I mean, with the brute style starting to come into yeah. into fruition, yep. uh, what do you maybe think that are potential other beer styles that could come up with that. I think this beer can tolerate drying out because okay. it has a lot of other flavors that can can hide that dryness yes. or, or you know prop up the beer uh, like the, the the heavy dry hop helps that uh, with beers that are less heavy dry hopped it it but might just end up being very flat okay um, but actually the the jacked up dry wit uh, this was the same kind of process that we used we dried out a blanche basically okay. or a white um, so it it I think it, I forget where it finished in the, in the Play-Doh is like zero point something. So it's still really dry. Um, so that's one style that we, we definitely know that it does work with. I mean, there's just so many potential with beer I find, uh, versus either like uh, a hard liquor or yeah. wine. There's yeah. more to experiment with, with beer, especially now how yeah. the popularity of craft beer is right. just exploding beyond yeah. just bigger and bigger, bigger every year. So yeah. it's like, oh, what's, what's new? Oh, I got to try yeah. something that's new. Uh, we've, we tried Utopia, uh, a couple of years ago, and we're yeah. just like, it's like a sherry, hmm. uh, with a little bit of hoppiness. I'm like, so yeah. it's it's a hoppy hard liquor almost. Yeah. So it's just like with There's, something like that, it's uh, reusing the yeast and, and yeah. developing new flavors. I think are it's an excellent. Thing to try. There's so. there's so many different uh, cross contamination activities yeah. happening happening lately. Uh, you know, one one thing that I see every time I go downtown is uh, is beer cocktails. Uh, people mixing alcohol with beer yeah. uh, or just different different mixes. Uh, you know, I was I used to do that when I was a lot younger. Yeah, uh, mixing yeah. Uh, uh, clamato with beer. So. Yeah, well, I think it's called a beer chalada or something, something like that. Yeah. So, but one of the ideas that we had when we were making the the French saison with the lemon juice or the leftover lemons is to make a lemonade and then put that into a uh, into the saison to make okay. a, a rattler. Oh, nice! So that's that's something that uh, perhaps next summer when it. When the weather turns around, uh, um, get get on the on top. What new beers that you can say are besides what you already mentioned? Uh, what other ideas do you have to to be brewing? So we we want to get into a lot more local uh, non beer collaborations okay. with local products. Uh, we did the Bitter Englishman, which was a collaboration with uh, Marlene, uh Cho- Chocolatier in, okay. in the Point Clair Village. Uh, we added a bunch of his chocolate, chocolate nibs, and, and uh, coffee into the into the ESB. Some other ones that we're working on, uh, we canned it. We're going to release it. Uh, I think it's this well, probably next week. Um, is the the Pint de Joe? It's a okay. it's our imperial stout. We added coffee from uh, Toi Moi Cafe or Cafe okay. Mystic. Yeah, uh, they're the a coffee roaster in, in Montreal. Uh, that one's coming out very soon. But yeah, we'd like to work with a lot more local providers, local okay. local producers uh, to get their names out and, and to help uh, help our brand as Excellent. well. Because I know um, uh, used bread is starting to become a popular thing yeah, with brewers. Have you ever thought about going to St. Viator and being like, just pass this way you're not using? And, you know what? We can always try that. Yeah. They're very close. Uh, yeah. I'm not quite sure what stuff they have that, yeah. they're, they're, that they're throwing out. Okay. Um, would it be enough for us to actually make a product out yeah. of? Uh, so that's okay. it. What's the most pain in the butt part about brewing? There's a lot. Okay. Um, <laughs> There's a lot. I know I, um, I was looking at doing home brewing and it's like you have to be thorough about cleaning and I'm not great with that. So Cleaning is extremely important. Um, so like I mentioned, I, I started home brewing in my garage and, and I've, until a couple of weeks ago, had never brewed on our production system. Okay. We, have a, we have a master brewer, Dan, yeah. Dan Ablanis. He's fantastic. But I want to get more involved in, in the process and understand it more completely. So I brewed with him uh, on two long double brew days okay. uh, last week. We brewed the mango creamsicle. And I, I got a, a real sense of of what it is end to end, and there's yeah. a lot of cleaning. Yeah, there's a lot of prep. There's a lot of cleaning uh, after you're done your brew. There's another like two hours just to clean up. Um, so that, that's one thing. Uh, the other thing, more from a 
from a waste management side of things is the uh, the spent grain that we okay. have. Uh, we don't have any farmers that come and pick up our stuff. So right now we're composting it. Okay. Uh, we we have a company that comes and picks up the compost, but we're paying for it at yeah. quite, a, quite a dear price. So uh, there's a, a meeting with some other brewers downtown that we're going to next week that, okay. that's going to be talking about you know ways that we can do this. Uh, whether it's farmers using it for feed for animals, yeah. or we've we've actually tossed around the idea of opening up a, a subsidiary business okay. to to make products from that. Whether it's making dog biscuits, which you know Sarah used to to make by yes. hand uh, here when she was here, uh, or if it's to to make a mulch to make to grow mushrooms, or, oh. there's all kinds of different yeah, ideas. Yeah, I, I understand. There's yeah. a lot you could do with the wort and spent grain. That yeah. it's just. Um, yeah, so yeah apparently it's 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 un, almost unlimited potential, but yeah. it's um, it's when you you don't have it because I mean we have kind of vicious winters in Quebec, so yeah. it's not exactly easy to grow a mushroom farm garden outside. No, that's or, it. So uh, the dog biscuits I've never heard of. I'm gonna have to check that out. I was uh, in Toronto and there's a brewery called Black Lab Brewing. Yep. Yeah. And there's just dogs everywhere, and there's that's dog awesome. treats, and there's like uh, it's called. Uh, brew bark and it's like a okay. dog beer but zero alcohol yeah nice so um i mean because you're you don't have a food license so people bring in their dogs here and yep you're not a problem yeah, yep. we have yeah. a, a dog bowl right over oh. there oh, there you go yeah and when it comes to uh, people bringing their kids that's not an issue here. not an issue okay. they're not allowed to sit at the bar yeah it's just part of the, the okay. license the legality you have, you have the other section yeah we have the other section yeah. even in the tap room here that's fine we have games okay. the kids like playing yep. uh past clap and and the the giant jenga yeah yeah yeah, Giant Jenga is becoming really popular. And yeah. I'm seeing a lot of craft brewers who uh, are trying to bring in a gaming culture yep. uh, to them. Yeah, the guys uh, at Bois Blanc had yeah. a ton of games yeah. at, when they had their tap room in Hudson. Yeah. So I guess at this point, uh, give everybody your uh, website, your socials. How can sure. people contact Labros? Okay. Uh, so you can find us at labros.com, L-A-B-R-O-S-S-E.com. Okay. We're on Instagram, Facebook, uh, at Labros Brewery. You can give us a call at uh, 514-695-7770. Okay. Uh, we're everywhere. Uh, people who are visiting, how easy is it to get from the airport to here? It's pretty easy. So. Uh, we get a lot of international travelers or people traveling on business. Um, a lot of them stay at the uh, the Holiday and just on the other side of St. John's, which, okay. you know, if, if you're ambitious, you could walk from there. Um, it, it's it's not too far. It's probably a $3 Uber. Excellent. Uh, so I'm going to add all of this in the show notes and you can find us there. Uh, this is our first YouTube video. So subscribe, uh, stars, whatever you want to do. Uh, just you can find us online at All Beer Inside everywhere, allbeerinside.com, where we'll have the audio and uh, YouTube all Beer Inside channel to watch the video. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Troy. Have a good day. Thanks.